Congratulations on making it this far. I'd say we're about 50% of the way through. What we're lacking is using our model as an actual analysis tool. So what we need is we need a way to actually make our model more practical. So what we've done so far is we've condensed a lot of bulky data which details all our external and all of our internal profitability drivers into a single process flow from the beginning, from when we source our raw materials, up until the end when we export it to our clients and receive payment. We've also modeled our taxation and our working capital and all of our debt to know how our business actually operates holistically from beginning to end. However, if we're looking at the financial summary tab, it's still bulky, even if it summarizes so much data in a single sheet, it in itself fails to really paint a really clear picture of how our business is performing. Sure, we have things like EBITDA margin, which is a very useful summary um, that show us operationally our business enjoys quite healthy EBITDA margins. But if we look, it starts to taper off and drop down. But that's all lost in the noise of all of these numbers. So we need a very clear, coherent way to summarize exactly how our business is doing over time. And what I found the clearest way to do this is by means of constructing graphs and diagrams. So I've chosen three variables, capital expenditure, because this is a, a project financing and it's very important to see how this project gets constructed and how much it costs to construct it. I've also chosen copper production because I want to see the ramp up profile. I want to see how this business grows over time. And last but not least, I've chosen EBITDA, which is just a proxy of operational profit with all the noise of taxation, depreciation, etc. removed. So just operationally, the business itself, is it viable or not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these three variables. And uh, the graphs that I like best are the ones that show multiple variables on a single chart. So I'm going to choose a combo chart. Um, I'm just going to... See, capital expenditure can stay as column, that's fine. I'm going to change the production to area, and EBITDA can stay as a line, just so that each variable is distinct and it's represented differently and clearly. Another thing that I'm going to do is, because I see capital expenditure and EBITDA are in dollar terms, so I'm going to leave that on my vertical axis, but I see copper production is in millions of tons. I'm going to shift that to my secondary axis. Okay. And then further for aesthetic reasons, I'm just going to adjust the axes so that both my horizontal and vertical axes have a single zero point. So um, axis options, Just let's just fool around with this and see where it gets us. Okay, now we need to reset that. We can make the minimum, let's say, minus 250. So this is not an exact science. It's just you have to use your eye for this uh, because every graph will be different. Um, 220 maybe? Perfect. Okay. So what that's doing is it just makes it easier for comparison purposes um, that my capital expenditure is money going out, so I'd like it to go uh, negative in the negative direction and my production is positive, so it's going in the positive direction. So just expand this graph a bit and let's see what we can see. We can see that we spend a lot of money in capital expenditure in the first two years as we're constructing the project and that the production profile ramps up quite dramatically and reaches steady state production around 2024. It increases slightly but then slightly tapers off and we saw that makes sense earlier because when we look at our mining assumptions we can see that this slight drop-off is caused when PIT2 uh, comes to an end but is replaced by PIT3. And that happens around 2029, 20, 2030. We can also see that around 2028, 2029, uh, EBITDA starts to fall quite significantly. And there's also quite a lot of capital expenditure, which also corresponds to us opening up pit three. 
So we can tell all of this information just by looking at a graph as opposed to all of, all of the information is contained here as well, but uh, it's lost in all of the noise. So a graph is practically a lot easier for us to just form a snapshot picture of how our business is doing. So it looks very healthy, but then we want to know why our EBITDA margins start to fall uh, quite significantly going forwards.